Well, first he was a preemie. Okay. So the doctor told us he should be caught up with everything by the time he turned two. And when he turned two, that didn't happen. So, you know, we went back to the doctor and said, you know, he's two now, he should be caught up with the speech and things of that nature. The doctor referred us to developmental specialist and she's the one that gave us the diagnosis. Everything that we told her pointed to autism. You know, he was doing his talking early on and then it stopped as far as doing the mama babbling thing and then it stopped. Um, he got back into doing more talking maybe around three-ish, but it was, you know, just words here and there, not sentences, things of that nature. He was doing his ABCs though, or, or counting, but as far as, you know, saying sentences and things along, along that line, he didn't have it just yet. Khalid, Khalid. I just had to get to know him, you know, as Khalid to figure him out because at first, you know, it was like, okay, don't cry, don't cry. But after a while, you can't keep doing it. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't get anywhere. So, I mean, just as a typical child, the same thing, you know, they, he knows how to catch on to certain sequences and things of that nature. So, I have to sit back and think of, of, of that as well. It's made him stronger, a little bit more alert and, you know, conscious of other people. If they see someone that might have a disability, they're a little bit more understanding and more caring where, you know, most youngsters won't be. You know, they tend to laugh and joke about where, as them two, they will be more of helping. Well, a lot of meeting my goal family okay. <laughs> is is one. Um, with Khalid, the progress that he's made along the way has really, you know, put a, a smile on our hearts. You know, Khalid, he is talking now. Um, he's starting to really come out of his shell more where he's being more social with his own peers where for a long time Khalid would not interact with anybody. And so, you know, it's just he's making progress every time you turn around. And it can be something small, but every little bit turns into a big piece, just like the puzzle, you know? I hope for him to be aware and conscious because Sometimes he can be unaware and unconscious of what's going on. So at times when I look him in the eyes, I can see that he's there, like he's really paying attention. Then other times it's, it's just kind of like a blankness in his eyes. Well, I have to, it's my job. <laughs> it's my job, it's my duty. So I have my moments as everyone should, you know, you have to get that frustration out. But at the end of the day, I still have work to do to help push him further along because I'm not gonna always be here. His dad is not gonna always be here. You know, he has to get to a place where he can kind of function on his own when he becomes an adult. So, you know, and I don't, I try not to baby him because, you know, the world is not gonna baby you, you know. So I'm kind of a little stern with him on certain things. Breathe, <laughs> take deep breaths. And I sometimes have him do it as well. If he's crying, I just say, okay, let's breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And that seems to calm him down too sometimes. So as I say, you're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna be aggravated. But don't let that stop you. Don't let it defeat you, you know. It's gonna be another day and try to start every day on a positive note as much as possible.